Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. I'd like to welcome you tonight for our live show as I'm going to try to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes and also sprinkle in some instruction and uh, some commentary, too, about who knows what. Uh, and, of course, my commentary a partner over there is Ashley. How are you doing tonight, Ashley? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. I hope you folks are doing well and you're ready to draw along or watch and make comments and uh, and ask us about uh, maybe the artwork that you're making right now. So let's see what Matt has in store for us tonight. Yeah, let's see what Matt has in store for us tonight. <laughs> Uh, as most of you probably know, um, this show is about creating a drawing inside of 45 minutes. And usually during our seasons, we have a theme or we've done a game show theme. We've done a prompt theme. I think that was the same, same yeah, season. We did but the, <laughs> um, uh, in the style of theme. The in the style of that was, yeah, that was last season, last season. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah. And this season we've decided that we were just going to draw what we want to. So we're choosing our own subject matter this season in our own mediums as well. And this will be my fourth drawing of the season. Pretty deep in the season that right? now. Yeah, that's right. Fourth season. Yeah. So, so this is our eighth episode yeah. of the season. Um, so tonight we're going to be drawing glasses. Uh, and um, I picked this because, well, really, Ashley gave me the idea. <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, things to draw, and he brought up glasses. I said, hey, that's a great idea. I think I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, I had planned on putting something behind the glasses, but I decided to keep it simple because this is a 45-minute drawing. That yeah, and that's I have a to challenging complete. subject anyway, Matt. Oh, know? yeah, I think if, so. Yeah, It's... um. Glasses have some curves to them, but they're they're symmetric. And even if you draw them from an angle, they need to look like they would be symmetric. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were to look at them straight on. So, um, so you're gonna have to uh, take your time with this one, Matt. No rush. Take <laughs> I got to take my 45 minutes for this one. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, during tonight's broadcast, if you do have a comment or question, you can put that in the chat box. If you, uh, we we are asking you if you want your question or comment to be. Um, What's the word I'm looking featured? for? Featured. 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 If you'll yeah. use the super chat function, uh, that does cost a little bit of money, but that money goes to help our um, our broadcast here. So we'd really appreciate it if you use the super chat function. Uh, and if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the notification bell so you're notified when we do go live and when I broadcast the regular videos or I guess I don't broadcast it when I upload the regular videos here on this channel. Um, and if you like the video, make sure you like it and leave a comment below if you want. And if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, then you need to check out the membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. It includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. Weekly live lessons, so after we're done here with Getting Sketchy, we're going to continue the live lesson series where I am creating an image of a bee on Scratchboard. Um, but all of our live lessons are recorded, and you can go back through our vault and watch any of the live lessons that have ever been broadcast. That's all included in the membership program. There's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute. We're approaching nearly 500 of those, or in the 400 somewhere. And there is a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, which includes absolutely everything you would need to teach, except for your warm body. You would need to have that in the classroom with the students, of course. Um, all of that is included in the membership program. And if you want to learn more about the membership program, there's a link in the description below. Uh, you can check it out for free for seven days. Uh, we offer everybody a free trial for seven days. And then beyond that, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you want to just check out three of our course videos and eBooks, uh, and also be put on our mailing list where you'll get a ton of other free videos. There's a link in the description below for that as well. And hello to everyone in the chat box. I see people talking about glasses and where they're from and where they're from. Glasses don't, yeah. don't, uh, don't work. I've got two pair of glasses with me tonight. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You have one on your head. Right. Well, these are my regular glass. Then I got yeah. green glasses. So. Right. You need a. Third, it, actually, it actually works really third well pair. this way. Do you do that? Do you uh, do you walk no, around like that? I know somebody, and I know somebody from our distant past. And the first time I ever saw them out in public, this, yeah. this is how they looked. Did his first they name were, start with Terry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
he was reading a newspaper and he had his glasses on like this. Oh, that's funny. And it's funny that I knew who you were talking about. Because I don't think I ever saw him do that, no. but I, I knew. You knew that he would. It had to have been him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You guessed huh. it right off the bat. That's great. Anyway, um, we have a super chat from Carter. And Carter, I will play the little silly animation in a minute. I don't have access to it with this camera view, but we'll play it in a minute. But his comment is, you think you guys will ever do a monotype again? Yeah, I did a monotype yep. a number of seasons ago, and mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. And I think... I don't know. I don't have any plans to do a monotype soon, but uh, especially as we near the end of this season. But I would like another crack at that. So yeah. I thought it came out well, mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't print the way I had hoped or anticipated. I mean, it's a live show. Things yeah. like that. Uh, things like that happen. It was lighter and darker in a few areas. I think I'd like a like a more um, um, unified print. So maybe. Yeah, you, I love monotypes or monoprints. You need a printing press. Yeah, yeah, right. You really you need a printing press. I'll wheel really. the printing press in here. Yeah. And uh, we'll, bring yeah. It, we'll bring it around the Just back. Just wheel it, it in. It weighs about three or 400 pounds. Yeah. And uh, put, a, put a camera on it and make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure every medium that we've covered, we'll, we'll cover it again. Um, monotype included. Mm -hmm. um, I think yes. there's a couple of lessons on the website about mono. You know, that's printing really monotype. That's one that has to be done fast. Yeah. I mean, you're always, you know, it's it's. Uh, you can take more than 45 minutes at home, uh, but it's not the type of artwork that you can work on for days because it's uh, dependent on how fast the ink's drying, and it's drying. Yep, that's that's the truth. Mm -hmm. it's perfect. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into this one. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over. All right. Shifting around here, moving so that I got my paper in front of me. Mm -hmm. Now, what size is that paper? Uh, yeah, I'm getting to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to jump get ahead of me here. <laughs> um, actually, this is a pretty small piece of paper here. Uh, it's four and a half inches by six inches, which is proportional to the reference over here. And speaking of the reference, if you do want to have a copy of the reference for yourself, uh, you can go to the community tab on the YouTube channel to get to the YouTube channel. Even though you might be thinking you're watching this on the YouTube channel, chances are you're not. Uh, to get to the YouTube channel, just click on the little icon of my face in the lower left-hand corner. That will take you to the channel and then click on the community tab. And then at the top of the community tab, you will see uh, my post here with a link back to this video and also the photo reference so you can download it and use it alongside of your own drawing if you want. I'll have it up, of course, during tonight's broadcast, but if you want your own, you know where to find it. This is regular white drawing paper. I think it's maybe 400 series Strathmore. I'm not sure if it's 400 series or 300 uh, series. And I'm going to be using uh, a couple pieces of charcoal here. So I'm going to be using a stick of vine charcoal. And I also have a really skinny stick of vine charcoal. I'm not really sure if I'll use the skinny stick, but I was just mesmerized by how skinny it was. <laughs> um, and I have an assortment of uh, blending stumps here. So I'll be using some of those as well. And I have compressed charcoal in the form of a charcoal pencil. And uh, for those of you who want to get real technical, this is a 2B medium, although uh, any charcoal pencil that you use uh, is going to have compressed charcoal and will be dark enough to do what we're doing here tonight. Um, I also have, let's get all this, this burnt organic material out of the way. I also have a couple of erasers. I have my kneaded eraser here that is... Old, it's, I almost said old in the tooth, but it's really long in the tooth, long right? The tooth. What does that mean anyway? Do your it, teeth you keep growing? Your gums recede. Oh. So it makes your teeth look longer. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So uh, this is pretty old, but it's still effective, barely. Um, and I have a Mono Zero eraser. This is made by Tombow. This is a vinyl or plastic eraser mm -hmm. and it allows for some precision and then i also have my electric eraser here just to give you Power a little, tools. little bit of sound there hope that it's picked up there this is so so rewarding and fun to use it so. is you don't need one but it does speed up your it speed up your precision erasing 
Yeah, it definitely helps a lot because it can a crisp little mark. It can get uh, some vigorous action in a small little area, and uh, when you're adding in highlights and such, that's a good thing to have there at your disposal. Um, I see Mary Elizabeth ask, "Are you using a paper yeah, reference?" I was bring that up because you and mm -hmm. I both use the iPad. Yes, I, I have an iPad in front of me, mm -hmm. which is right over here. You can't see it, but I'm going to be looking at it and using it for uh, the, the reference photo is on there. So um, sometimes it, I print a paper reference as a yeah. backup because uh -huh. my iPad battery is low. Yeah, um, It's nice to have a paper reference because you can actually make marks on it. Uh, of course, you can make marks on the iPad too. You just have to be able to find your pencil, your iPad pencil. Right. And I spend a lot of time looking for mine. Right. I, um, I, for a long time, I printed out my references mm -hmm. and, uh, then I got a little bit smarter and just started using the iPad because when you print out your reference, uh, depending on the quality of your printer, sometimes you'll get, uh, some values that are not quite accurate. Yep. And, um, on your iPad, or if you have the photo reference in a digital form, uh, your, your colors and values are going to be a little bit more accurate and you can zoom in on the iPad. Yeah, or that's, on that's a really device. The best part, especially mm -hmm. if you're not wearing your uh, your glasses, because you've got them laying down and you're drawing them instead. Right. I'm gonna start calling you eight eyes. <laughs> eight eyes. Yeah. But it wouldn't be eight eyes. It'd be six eyes. Six eyes. Right. Six eyes. Yeah. I can uh, yeah. I can don another pair of glasses. Six eyes. You could be eight eyes. There's room yeah. for another pair. You could be a spider. Yeah, that's right. Everybody hates spiders. I can't tell you how many people have commented on. Uh, the course I did, right, and not pencils the, on not polyester, the, not the drawing, no, or the, or the usefulness of the information, right, not about the instruction, it's about the, the subject, it's about the spider, yeah, but I can't look, I can't draw a spider. <laughs> what are you doing? Will you do this over and do a different animal? I just can't do a spider. Just start over. All right. Well, uh, well no spiders tonight. On, only glasses. Um, so I'm going to start with the vine charcoal, and I'm going to kind of give you a rundown of my plan of attack here. Okay. I'm. I'm going to cover the entire paper with the vine charcoal first. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to use a blending stump to blend it all in. Then I'm going to use a kneaded eraser to make it lighter. Then I'm going to go in with the compressed charcoal and start drawing the glasses. Now, the drawback to this approach is that we really can't start by drawing shapes, basic shapes and things. Uh, to plan out the location of the glasses. Um, that's going to make this drawing a little bit more difficult. Because you want want to mar the surface you put down. You know, right. So while, it's, while you're also discovering the, the glasses. Right. So essentially we're going to establish the background first mm -hmm. and then draw and make marks over the top of the background. So uh, that ups the difficulty level just a little bit, but uh, we should still be able to accomplish this, hopefully, uh, there are a lot of challenges here. We've got reflections. Uh, we've got transparency. Uh, there's some shadows with varying degrees of intensity. And we've got man-made glasses, uh, which need to appear at least like they are um, symmetrical on each side. So, all right. Uh, can you tell I'm procrastinating? <laughs> we have to, Is it obvious? We've been talking a little while. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll let you get into the questions. I'm going to start okay. the timer, and uh, oh, I said we were going to do a cheer for Carter. So here's the cheer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate the super chat that you gave us. Delayed cheer is the best cheer of all. All right, now I'm going to start the timer and start this for real. Oh, so right. we're going to start by covering the surface with a little bit of Von Charcoal. And Von Charcoal is the softer form of charcoal. Very porous, very light. So there was a question I'll answer while you are doing that from Hem Smith. What is the standard to measure fine art? Now, when I first read your question, I thought, well, it's a little, it's a little subjective. But I see you're asking about dimensions, like height by width. And yes, it's uh, it's height and width, or height, width, and depth. If it's a sculpture, like a relief sculpture, or even a sculpture in the round, um, typically it doesn't really matter whether you list the height or the width. Um, first, you know, an 18 by 24 canvas is usually called that, whether the 18 inches is on the side or on the bottom, you know, landscape or portrait orientation. So typically, whatever the measurements are, height and width, whether they're in inches or in centimeters, um, usually the lower number is listed first. So if you turn an 18 by 24 sideways, 
it's still an 18 by 24, not a 24 by 18. I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, so you might be wondering, why am I doing this? <laughs> I often ask myself that question. You used this approach a few <laughs> weeks ago, a little bit. I did, yeah, yeah uh, same approach. With, uh, with toning your paper. Yep. Um, and the reason for doing this is because we, ha we have a white surface, uh, but I'm getting some tone on the surface because I can push the values both lighter and darker. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to give me a little bit better. Uh, I, it's going to help me evaluate the values a little bit better. It's going to contribute to unity as well. Yes. Okay. So now that I've given it a... Uh, a once over with the blending stump. Now I'm going to give it a once over with the kneaded eraser Since and some make the background a little bit lighter. Yeah, when you look at the reference, it, it, the background is light gray, but there's not a lot of white in the artwork. And now there's no, in Matt's artwork, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of white in the reference, just the shiny spots on the lenses and a little bit on the rims. And um, so Matt has already gotten rid of the white of the paper so oh, i've got so a paper a towel idea. too there's not a lot of white in the reference to begin with all right now i'm going to take uh, the compressed charcoal pencil and i'm going to try to figure out where i want one end of the glasses to be so i'm going to kind of look at the amount of space i need to move over along the edge of the picture plane to figure out where i'm going to have this first edge of the glasses and i'm just going to kind of get an idea of where that is I'll drop down a little bit and then i'm also going to figure out where i want or get an idea of where the bottom edge is going to be located so you're finding little little landmarks that you feel secure about drawn in based on the edges of the picture plane i feel somewhat secure <laughs> somewhat secure because this is really taken somewhat of a a shot in the dark and now i'm going to start drawing the rim of the glasses and i'm going to pay attention to the edge of the picture plane to do so and then we're going to bring this line around here and just let it try to drop down at the same angle and then i can see where the middle of the picture plane is, which is about right here. And the edge of the glasses on this side is just a little bit above the halfway point. So I can kind of make a little bit of a comparison here. All right, and if our edge of our glasses are right here, let's move it up a little bit higher. We can start making that diagonal mark down, and we're going to slowly try to find the glasses. So we're not going to try to force anything. These lines you're drawing right now, they could become the the edge of a, of a contour, or they could just sort of get swallowed up in the contour, so. And I immediately see that this needs to come down a little bit more at a stronger angle. And that might mean that this needs to come out just a little bit more. So Matt, you took your own reference for this. Yes, these are my glasses. I like how you turn the glasses from uh, opposite. You know, they go from corner to corner instead of like a horizontal. I mean, it's more interesting. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you a secret. I did that a little bit so that uh, the the drawing could be vertical. Oh, yeah. So you That's could good. see the reference and um, the subject or the reference and the drawing the same time. Yeah, that helps to, helps us to make the reference larger when we work with a, a vertically oriented format because our screens, you know, are horizontal, but they, they can fit two verticals on much better and we don't have to cover up the corner of our artwork. Sometimes we do that, use a horizontal reference anyway, just because it's, it's the right 
right for the composition, but uh, doesn't translate quite as well in the video. So I'm trying to use the middle part of the upper part of the lens to, it seems like kind of in that middle section, if we drop straight down, that's where this end kind of connects. Okay. So again, this is a little bit of guesswork, a little bit more guesswork than I would normally be doing in a drawing. But because of the approach we're taking, this is kind of how we need to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back up here. And I'm going to take that top edge, it bows out a little bit at the top. And try to get that curve as best as possible. And I'm definitely further over than expected to be but that's okay doesn't have to be perfectly accurate as you'll see uh, as the drawing develops we want to be as close to accurate as possible but if we're a little bit off it's not that big of a deal because you'll see that this is going to look a little bit more like a painting. Well, I, I, I guess I should say the thought process is a little bit more like a painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to start thinking in both directions, making things darker, like we do when we typically draw on white paper, but also um, reserve the, uh, the right to make things lighter as, as well. And that's more like a painter because painters mix light and dark colors uh, to work with on your palette, as opposed to using a tool that is just dark, like a, like a pencil is, or like charcoal is on white paper, and you're really just working with managing how much of the dark medium you use. So, gives it, and then of course, it's also gonna contribute, I mentioned before, to feeling of unity. Um, uh, sometimes you get a little bit of a, atmospheric feel when you work on a toned ground like this and that can that can help the artwork to hold together yeah for sure this is going to have a feeling of atmosphere so again just worrying about the the rims right now not all of that other stuff which will slowly develop. We'll slowly pull all that other stuff out. Mm -hmm. Not too terribly slowly. <laughs> moderate at a moderate pace. Yeah, Forty-five minutes. Well, it's a, this is a great reference for the tools that you showed. You plan to use both the needed eraser, um, which is very sort of kind of kind of not kind of amoeba-like. It's kind of blobby, and. Uh, and then you've got the electric eraser, which is the very opposite. It's ultra yeah, high speed. I will control. actually be using the, uh, from here on out, I will mostly be using the vinyl eraser. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of little skinny highlights on those rims. Perfect for that Tombow. All right, let's go ahead and give some indication of the arms that are behind. And we run into a highlight right here, so we'll leave a little bit of space for right now. And I guess these are arms, wings, the wings of the glasses. The, the wings of the glasses? The wings. <laughs> well, you know, I call nostrils nose flaps. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So why couldn't these be wings? Yes, they could. Totally be wings. All right. All right, so I'm going to look at the negative space right here and the shape that the negative space makes and try to replicate that. So I'm looking at that triangular shape mostly. And then this kind of comes out. Anne's wondering about using... Uh 
char uh, using graphite over the charcoal toned um, ground to get the shiny frames. And would that make it a mixed media artwork? It would make it technically mixed media. Those are two media that don't mix well. Yeah, they, and, you're going to run into some frustration with yeah, that. And it's not that they that you can't use them together. You know, it's not that a graphite won't make a mark over over the charcoal, but the charcoal is a black medium, and the graphite is really a a gray medium. And graphite is 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 definitely shiny, but it's shiny for the wrong reasons. You know, these glasses are going to look shiny because of the light marks next to the really dark areas in the frames. Um, so. Uh, but the dark areas themselves won't be physically shiny. But the really black graphite is physically shiny. It can be a little bit hard to look at sometimes. So in that way, charcoal is a superior medium to graphite. Now, graphite's got its strong points, so I'm not hating on graphite. I've used it twice this season, and I love it. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't really unify well with charcoal. So I would, you can try it. See if you like it. I've had, I've had students use them together. And uh, and they didn't look as bad as as bad as my description might sound. So give it a shot. But I typically stay away from using those two media together. And you do have the option um, of uh, of getting yourself a charcoal pencil, like Matt's using, which gives you the control back um, that we're used to having with a with a pencil in our hand, as opposed to like a chunk of vine charcoal. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up here with the uh, vinyl eraser here. And then we'll start adding some darker tones. All right. Kind of um, solidifying things a little bit. This little angle right here needs to. You know, if I wanted to use, char if you want to use charcoal or uh, graphite rather, for the glasses, I would use graphite for the whole process. You can tone your paper with graphite as well. So a little bit more work to make it look smooth. You know, you have to put it down a little bit slower. But you can totally tone your paper in graphite and then continue to proceed uh, with that with that medium. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. If you wanted to do this the same way, but do it in graphite, I would definitely do the whole thing in graphite. But it would take way longer. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start adding some darker tones here. I need to sharpen this pencil here. Now, Enrique wonders if he, if he used a carbon pencil with the charcoal. Is that better? Yes, I would say that's better. Charcoal, the carbon pencil is closer and blacker. Yeah, but it's the carbon pencil is not going to blend like uh, the charcoal will. Just keep that in mind. That's true. Guys, you can you can use any medium that you wish, but it's going to look different. Just just keep that in mind. That's all right. So we've got some darker values up here, or lighter values right here. So we'll go ahead and just kind of establish those. And I'm I'm thinking in terms of the darkest values right now, and I'm going to put in some of the medium values, yeah, but I'm going to. There's gray in those frames, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot that. of gray, but I'm going to be using the blending stop in just a minute. Okay. So I'm really just concentrating on the darkest areas of value that Get I those see. Get darkest areas in, and then you figure there'll be enough graphite on the paper to start moving it around and kind of painting with it. Right. Yeah. Now, so, and I'm also not trying to draw all of the details perfectly too. That's mm -hmm. important to keep in your mind. I'm looking mainly at shapes of darker and light value. That's what I meant by I'm thinking more like a painter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of focusing on drawing lines only. Mary Elizabeth wonders why no white, no white charcoal. And if this were on gray paper, instead of it be, having been toned gray with the charcoal, then I think working using some white charcoal in conjunction with the regular charcoal would be the would definitely be the way to go. But since Matt is working over white paper, um, then he he still has the option to use the white of the paper for his highlights. So I think that's why he didn't show us any 
white charcoal. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not using the white charcoal for that reason. And also, um, the white charcoal is going to be a different color temperature than the white of the paper. Oh yeah. Uh, so if I if I brought in white charcoal right now, it would stand out. It would almost look blue. Yes. Um, if you're working on a gray surface, however, you're not going to run into that issue as much. And look, the palm of my hand's messing up my gray background. Palm of my hand. Uh, all right, so we got dark value, a little bit of a lighter value out here, and then a super dark value. So again, just looking at shapes of dark and light. and dark and then we run into a highlight right here so i'm going to leave a little bit of space there although we're going to erase out that highlight in a bit no and, sense in putting a lot of black underneath it though you just have more to erase out right for sure and then we got a dark value right there and one right there and around the outer edges of of the ends of the wing here <laughs> put a little darker value there too the ear hooks on the ends of the wing i like ear hooks <laughs> i really like ear hooks all right and, and there's a dark edge that goes right down the ear wing And don't you worry about the shadow, the cast shadow at this point. We're going to add the cast shadow mostly with uh, the blending stuff. Well, I have looked up the parts of glasses. Uh-oh. We're experts now. Yeah, we're, we're experts. Are Which, you going to share I mean, any of that information? I just want you to keep making up stuff. <laughs> and then I'm going to giggle quietly into my phone. Okay. Now I've always said, you know, I'm going to go get a new set of a new pair of frames, a new new frames. You've and always said that. I've always said frames. So I don't know if the, the whole thing, the whole glasses unit minus the, the lenses are all frames, but it looks like at least the front portion that the lenses go in, those are called rims. Ah. Oh. So it's like the problem between, you know, tires and wheels. We talk about rims. I don't mean the tire. It's like that with glasses too, apparently. Got a new like, set of rims. A new set of rims. Go into time. the the glass glasses store and say, "Hey, I'm here to pick up a new set of rims." Yeah, I'm here to pick up some rims. You got any twenty twos? <laughs> Come out with some huge glasses. <laughs> but the but the uh, the part in question. Some spinners. What do you call them there, Matt. The wings. Yeah. They go, they're called the temples. The temples. Yeah, I ne would have never guessed. Hmm. The temples, huh? And and what I like to refer to as ear hooks. Apparently, those are temple tips. I definitely like ear hooks better. Yeah, these are horrible names. Yeah, who have, who made them? Redo these. Charts. It's the same people who did the Crayola <laughs> colors. Right, right. They're just making stuff. Ear up. hooks and brick red. We should we should be have we should make up our own. All right. I haven't looked at the clock at all. Oh, not too bad. No, you've still got it most of the time. And uh, Dan says, how should I make my glasses more visible? Should highlights be used? Uh, yes. And that's going to expand your, your range of value. And so, you know, I mean, Matt's glasses look plenty visible right now. I can already feel the highlight where he just skipped over a little bit of the temple. I guess that's showing through the lens there on the uh, the lens to, I guess the in the, the lens upper crafters left, the lens in the upper left, but um, <laughs> yeah, but getting the white in the highlights eventually that's gonna anytime you increase your value range you're gonna increase you know the visibility of your subject so and we're almost ready to do that right Matt, so I was, that's what I was getting to you know you're gonna get to watch it happen here the only just thing a few minutes is this. This section up here, this curve right here needs to be a little bit more curvy, but I don't know if I'm going to change it uh, because 
it would involve some radical erasing and marring. Mm -hmm. um, and I still think that this is reading, these are reading as proportional classes at this point. So I think I'm going to make the decision to not. But, but it is, this is the right time to decide if you want to make any changes to your proportions out there before you start to get into smaller details. Yes. So do the yes. same thing Matt just did and evaluate the proportions of your glasses and make sure you're ready to go on um, to, the, to, the, to the next steps, which would include putting some smaller marks in and some highlights. Yes. Because you the, don't want to move those around later. The next big step is going to be to um, blend. I don't know if that you would consider that a big step or not, but that's that's the next thing I'm going to do here. After I finish down here, just getting some value in place. So now that I've got what I consider to be the darkest darks in place, now I'm going to take a blending tortilla, and um, I'm not going to use this blending tortilla. This is terrible. I'm going to use this one. <laughs> And uh, then we're going to blend to create some of those gray areas. And as we do this, there are some little bits of slightly darker value right over the top of the little lenses. So right. we'll look for opportunities to add those little areas too. And while we're doing this, of course, we're picking up the material and some of it is staying on our blending tool. Mm -hmm. So this is going to allow us to throw in some shadows here in just a minute. It's got a, uh, Dan has clarified his, uh, his, his question a little bit as far as drawing glass and making it stand out. I think he's more specifically wondering about how to just to make glass in general look more realistic. And a lot of it has to do with the sharpness or crispness of any reflections or highlights that reflect into the glasses. So those are dark reflections. We don't really have those here, like you might have on a storefront window or the window of a car or light reflections, like we do have here in the highlight on the lens in the upper left. So crisp changes in shape and value um, will, will help. These glasses don't really create a change in the background, which is just the surface of the paper, you know, um, too much when we look directly through the lenses. But what you can see that in the shadow, you know, the shadow of the lenses that we can see through the lenses are just slightly darker than the outside of those cast shadow lenses. So there's a little change there in value that's pretty subtle um, that, are, that in this case will contribute to it looking like it's glass. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I drew um, clear plastic. It was a tape dispenser, clear tape in a clear tape dispenser. And uh, that was a totally different approach. Uh, I was using grayscale markers, um, but it had more distinct reflections in the clear plastic. So, you, so if you remember that lesson a few weeks ago, or you could take a look at that one, and we talked a little bit more about those um, sort of the uh, looking for those more distinct reflective shapes. And, uh, and it's the dark ones sometimes that can actually make the clear object look pretty pretty shiny and pretty clear. Now, in this blending process, don't be alarmed if you lose a little bit of detail because we're going to go back and um, with a sharpened compressed charcoal pencil and add details along with the highlights. So um, just a little bit of, of that advice there in there as well because it's easy to be doing some blending and you lose the edges, you lose the crisp edges and so mm -hmm. on. That's okay. Yeah. And that's with a very pointy tool. You know, it was a question before about, I think it's from, um, let's see, to pal pal, are tortillions actually worth buying or can I just use a tissue? And, uh, you can use, you can just use a tissue, but it's good to fold it up so that it makes a sharp little corner. I would say yes, buy the tortillas because this is, this is, feels rigid in my hand and um it gives me control and they're super cheap yeah they're super especially cheap, even yeah. compared to stumps the tortillions are more disposable 
Um, they're hollow compared to the solid all the way through stump, which and are still inexpensive. I mean, these, we're talking about, of all the art materials out there, you know, stumps and tortillions and charcoal and erasers, th this is all the cheap stuff. So, mm -hmm. so you, it, if you're in a bind, you know, you can make, make your own. I just fold paper into something more like a paper football. Um, that way I've got three corners, but they still kind of crumple and break down a little bit more easily um, than the tightly rolled tortillions. And the tortillions are relatively a kind of a softish paper um, that they're made from, and that's probably why they do such a good job picking up and carrying the material around a little bit. All right, picking up. Speaking of picking up, carrying around the material, mm -hmm. let's uh, let's go ahead and try to put in a little bit of a cast shadow, and then we'll go back and refine refine the details and the glasses. Right. So I'm just going to use the blending tortilla and pull out a line here, and then as we go up here. Uh, going back to that question about glass, yeah, that really the secret to glass, in my opinion, and, and really any shiny surface, whether it's glass or metal or anything like that, mm -hmm. is uh, noticing the fact that there are, when we have surfaces like that, we usually see a dark value right next to a light value. And there's usually high contrast between those values. So if we have a flat surface, for example, um, or if we have a, a surface that's not shiny, that's like a matte surface, that's what I meant to say, not mm -hmm. a flat surface, a matte surface, um, then there's usually a gradation of value. So we'll go from dark to light, for example, slowly and gradually, but with a highly reflective surface or glass or anything transparent like that, like this, uh, we usually see a dark right next to a light. And you can see that on the glass surface itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have can, that strong highlight. We can highlight. see it on the, on the rims. Yeah, you can see they, it on the they're, rims. They're, too, they're yeah. plastic. They're a smooth plastic. But notice that the highlights on the rims, like the, on the bridge of between the two, uh, the two lenses, the edge of that highlight is just a little softer. There's a very narrow area of gradation between that light and dark. And that communicates to me that it's less reflective or less shiny than the glass. So, so how sharp or crisp those reflected shapes are, um, we're pretty sensitive to that. Uh, we look at textures all day long, all the time, plastic and glass included, metal. And uh, so that's one way you can control in the mind of your viewer whether it's like super, super reflective glass or just something that's sort of moderately shiny. I guess we would call that satin, like a satin finish. There's a little bit of variety in, in this shadow. So, uh, just a little subtle bit of variety, making it a little bit darker in a couple of areas. Enrique uh -huh. had asked, can I get a good charcoal drawing with watercolor paper? Sure you can. Now, if it's if it's cold pressed paper and it's kind of textured, you know, probably going bigger is better. That way, the texture, um, you know, by comparison, feels a little tighter and smaller. But um, good drawing is about value and proportion. And so, as long as your if your drawing has good value and proportion, whether it's on a smooth surface or a rougher surface, um, it can be a pleasing drawing to look at. All right, I was getting ready to start on the cast shadow, but I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some of the highlights here Okay. first, and then we can refine things with a little bit more of the compressed charcoal, and then we'll add that shadow behind there. So I'm going to start with the uh, mono eraser and uh, just go ahead and start erasing out areas where I see highlights, and I'm going to try to mimic the shape as best as possible, but, uh, but I'm also going to consider the fact that I am, this is a small drawing and I'm not going to be able to get all of the highlights just perfect. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty tight, four and a half inches across. So we want to just think about a general idea of the shapes we're trying to replicate. Colleen, I saw your tip about extending the life of the tortillion. Your paperclip tip, that's a good idea. I'm going to steal that. 
you know, I've been using the same uh, tortillas over here for quite a while, mm. but I do that. You saw my needed eraser. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the oldest, darkest needed erasers I've ever seen. Well, it's been around. You've it's, done a good job keeping it off the floor. You know, seen a lot I, of action. I throw mine away usually because they get dirty before they actually get that dark. So, no, oh, nothing's worse than a kneaded eraser and the tread of your shoes. And the tread of your shoes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got a new pair of it's shoes. It's like on. gum, isn't it? Yes. And I've got a new pair of shoes that have a real tight tread pattern. And I stepped in a kneaded eraser in my classroom and didn't notice it, I guess. And I mean, I don't know how do you don't feel that, you know, but I guess I didn't. And uh, it got all over the bottom of my shoe and it doesn't dry, you know, it doesn't harden so that like mud, you know, and you can just kind of bang it out. You've got to pick it all out slowly, which I did. Could have made some interesting erasures with that afterwards. With the eraser in my shoe? Well, it had a pattern, right? Oh, yeah. Could have raised some graphite make <laughs> in the pattern of your tread. Gosh, Matt, I'm not that creative. Remember well, I was just trying stuff. to think of something positive in that, that situation. Remember the guy that with his golf shoes? He would make etchings with the metal spikes. I don't know if I remember that. Was he the same he, guy who he's did the... the second sculpture guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him. He I remember a, that part. Right. He was into trying to make art without... He was into making art when he was doing other things. So he would do other activities and try to come out with a piece of art. That was his thing. Yeah, I, do, I think I do remember the, the golf shoes thing. But I do remember him, like, do it, Facebook was new back then. Wasn't he doing, um, he was acting out people's Facebook posts. You mean he was redoing their Facebook he was, posts? As when people would say, you know, Facebook used to have this, a thing that said, what are you up to or mm -hmm. or what would you like to say or whatever. I, back when Facebook was new, people were saying such and such is doing this. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, he thought that was stupid. So he made <laughs> videos of people actually doing what their Facebook updates what it said, that said they, they were doing. doing. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Which now we, we think, of course, that's TikTok. Right, right. Yeah, he was a pioneer. So a slight little highlight right here. A little bit of a, a glare. And then we have another one right here. And it's almost time to break out the electric pencil or the electric eraser. I always want to call it the electric pencil sharpener. Stella said that her dog ate her needed eraser. I didn't think of that. So there's lots of reasons to keep them off the floor. They, they get dirty, they get in your shoe, and they get in your dog. Oh, what interesting erasers you could make with that. <laughs> and Mary Elizabeth wonders, who was, who was it that did the creative things with the shoes? I, I, there is no way either one of us is going to yeah, remember that I, guy's name. I, it's, it's locked somewhere in my brain. I can feel it. It's trying to, it's trying to surface. Uh, Mary Elizabeth, if it comes to mind, I'll tell you who it was. There's no way I'm going to remember that. No way. I can, I can feel it coming to the surface. I can feel it. Yeah, it's, it's a long lost Coming memory. in the air tonight. All right, let's put on this strong highlight and then All we'll... Right. Then we'll make uh, some of the values on the glasses a little dar darker, refine those, and then we'll drop the cast shadow, think, and so we should be you're done. doing well with your time. Oh, that is so satisfying. Well, changing the batteries in this thing made a huge difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably needed it for a while.
Uh, let's see, where else can we put a little bit of a oomph to the highlight? I like the soft box light reflection in there. I can see that grid pattern. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and just tighten up some of the details here on the back of this. We've got this little piece now, right here. Now, did you take, take multiple photographs of your glasses before you settled on this one? I took two photographs. Because I noticed your highlight is it's well placed right over dark parts of the glasses you know i do think about the lights and the shadows and i, I only took two photographs That's and this was good. this was actually the first photo that, that i took you used the first one and then i took another one i was like oh, i'd kind of like to have that strong highlight on both lenses mm -hmm. instead of just one but when i changed it to do that, the composition didn't seem as strong. So I was just like, okay, well, we'll, we'll go with this. Compositions, everything. So, so I'm just making a few of the darks a little bit darker to increase the contrast, which will make things uh, appear hopefully a little bit more realistic. And you'll remember at the beginning, I said I was going to approach this like a painter. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you try to look for details in here based on just the lines that, you know, if you were looking for details, if you zoomed in real close, this would look like an abstract collection of values. And that's really what a lot of painting is. So I'm just basically organizing these shapes of value so that it fools your eyes into thinking that you're looking at glasses. And that's what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going in and adding details per se, but just more variation in the value. You know, Matt, you are, you are, you are right around a, a topic I think about sometimes as far as representational and abstract art. You know, sometimes I think we use those words backwards. Well, yeah. Because you're making abstract shapes or shapes that are changed from reality to make us see glasses. Right. And I, I talk about that so point. It's, uh, it's a little sticky how we use the word abstract. In um, the course, Realistic Pencil Drawing, mm -hmm. in the module where I draw the car, one of the modules is called uh, abstraction because you really have to... You, you are making abstract shapes to create a realistic drawing. Yeah. And then when you think about cubism, which is considered, um, you know, considered abstract art, of course, and may, maybe even uh, most recognizable movement in abstract art. Um, and Picasso was trying to draw people from multiple angles to show you, I guess, the way their parts um look as a collection and in a way he was trying to 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 over represent people to represent them um more than you than you get with your your natural way of seeing so i guess that's that's abstract too but it's almost a, an attempt at a type of of representation so sometimes those words don't seem to seem almost interchangeable when they are uh kind of kind of used to mean opposite directions in the in our approach to art making okay I'm putting, i struggle with those words <laughs> i'm putting in the cast shadow with the compressed charcoal we'll move this around with the blending stump but the uh cast shadow is pretty dark in some areas yeah it sure in fact, is. it represents some of the darkest values in this subject so there was some question about the electric eraser and we're using white charcoal or the electric eraser because it was quiet and um it i can hear it in the studio so it's relatively it is relatively quiet yeah but these microphones they, you hear that yeah these microphones are really great about not picking up any sounds that they're not point, pointing at or directed at so. right so even though it's pre pretty loud, little eraser, um, as soon as it's below the microphone, it's a little hard to hear. But so Matt was, in fact, using the electric eraser. It's yep, no, no white charcoal in this one. Like I said earlier, it would, it would stand out like a sore thumb. 
the difference in value in the cast shadow is really nice and effective. You know, let's, I mean, it's pretty dark right under the lenses too, because you were so close to the, the, the rims that are casting, casting that shadow. See how I keep saying rims? You do. I got it down. You, you can work at any glasses store now because yeah. you know the, I'm gonna, the proper I'm terminology I'm gonna to go use. In and start throwing around terms like nose pads, and rims. So you can go in and say, hey, guy, do you know what this is called? <laughs> I'll bet you don't know what this is called, do you? Are you even qualified to work here? <laughs> do you even wear glasses, bro? I bet you, <laughs> bro. Bet you don't wear glasses, bro. Uh. All right, so we can see a little bit of a faint indication coming up here of the cast shadow. And then a little bit of the where the nose, I guess this is the, the nose part. What's that part called there, Ashley? The, the uh, bridge. Okay. It's not the nose holder. Mm -hmm. The nose grappler. It should really be called the nose holder. The ear, the ear Real, hooks and the nose holder. The ear, ear hooks and the nose holder. Um, you know, that we would all know what those parts are, right? Yeah, they probably should be called those things. You know, that's yeah, how, make, how language Make life so much simpler. You know, the English, we borrowed all these words we don't understand. Don't hand me those glasses like that. Hand them to me by the nose holder. <laughs> Everybody would know what part of the glasses you should grab there. All right, we're going to make how Latin works. You know, I'm going to use Latin words as medical terms now, and they sound fancy. But if you just translate them, they sound pretty simple. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Yeah. My daughter's in Latin three, so we still talk about Latin in my house. Oh, is she? I, I took yeah. Latin in college as my foreign language. Um, yeah. I took it over a summer. I took Latin one and two over one summer. I took four years in high school. I didn't have to take any in college. And, I didn't. and you're still no, alive. No, I did take language in college. I took Japanese. You took Japanese? Mm -hmm. I bet that was interesting. Oh, yeah, I loved it. A graphic language? It says... Well, it's interesting because um, it's got three alphabets. That's not interesting. That's confusing. <laughs> One alphabet is just for words that it came from foreign sources, words like coffee or American. They use a whole different alphabet for that. That way you can tell the words that are native. It's kind of neat. Just little bits of information you can glean from what al alphabet's been used. All right, just adding a few bits of some stronger contrasts here and there. Mm -hmm. Where I see the opportunity to... Oh, look, there's a shadow down here. Look, at, I was going to completely forget that shadow. You know, that happens sometimes here on Getting Sketchy. And we're done with our drawing. The show's over, and, you, and we see something we want to change. In fact, I've actually thought about working on one of my drawings from this season some more. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. The one that we've already done? One I've already done. Which one is that? The binoculars? I think it was the tape. Tape dispenser. I think I'd like to get darker in there. We'll talk about it on the 11th show of the season, which is our, our uh, critique show, where we go back through the artworks that we've made and uh, just kind of recap choices that we made and... and uh, we would do it the same or different, what we like and don't like about them. So don't miss the 11th show. Now, of course, that's so several weeks away, but it, I think it's a I think it's a good show. And there's no there's no drawing, but there's a lot of art talk. Yeah, that, a lot of people don't understand the importance of critique, and it is very important. And it, a lot of times, people also assume that critique is only important if it is your artwork that's being critiqued. Another mistake here. This is way too skinny up there, right in this area. Don't point it out. Well, 
I'm I'm pointing it out because uh, you know, I think a lot of folks can be really unduly hard on themselves. Yeah. When they're drawing and it freezes people and they don't want to to draw anymore because Yeah, that's true. Um because of that. And and trying to point out that uh you know, I'm pretty happy with this drawing, but there's mistakes in it. And there's always going to be mistakes and problems like that highlight. That's not where that highlight goes. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit bigger. I know we're almost out of time, but the highlight actually comes over the. I used to have a professor that would remind, you know, because we we save these highlights till late in the drawing, sometimes the very end. And he was of the opinion that you had to put them in with a with a sort of a confident temperament even if it's in the wrong place or the wrong shape if it goes down confidently it translates and that's, that's the whole truth to that yeah I, I i agree with that mm -hmm. especially when there are strong highlights yeah strong ones if you put them down yeah. and noodle them around too much you start to lose them or the edge becomes too soft and so you put them down and if they don't work his advice was to remove them completely now this is in a painting and then Put them down again with confidence until you until you feel like you got it right. Yeah, you know what time it is. It's the bottom of the hour. Time's time, up. Time to time's take the tape up. off. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, the tail of the tape. Yeah, I I would say I, I think I finished this within the time limit. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. You were putting your last touches on there as the seconds wound down. There's a lot more that could be done to it. Um, you know, you can fully refine a drawing, and I, I'll remind you again that this is a, a pretty small drawing. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if this was twice the size, how much you could go with the details. Oh, even yeah. even using a medium light charcoal, which a lot of people think is is hard to control and avoid it because of those feelings. Uh, but charcoal is actually really forgiving. Right, it's easy to remove. Yeah. So maybe maybe, maybe that makes it hard to control because it can smear. But you can change your mind a lot in charcoal, and I like it. I like that. It frees me up a little bit. All right, let's remove the tape here. And um, I taped my clothing beforehand, so I, but I'm not going to promise that I'm not going to tape a, take a little bit of paper well, off here. I used here. that tape last week, and it took some paper off my drawing, yeah, too. It's, it's some strong, for, for masking tape, it's, it's got a lot of <laughs> adhesive. It's because this masking tape is it. long in the tooth, <laughs> as they say. That's right. Um, and I don't know what happens to tape over time, but it seems to get more sticky. Yeah, right. It cures. It's like wine. But no matter how strong this tape is, if we're careful and pull it away at a 90 degree angle, see the 90 degree mm -hmm. angle, then even if it does tear the paper, it's not going to tear the artwork. Yeah, that's the important. Problem is if you try to pull it straight down, just kind of jerk, jerk it away, uh, that's when you're going to run into issues. Now look, now, now that we have those super crisp edges, we can really see how soft and atmospheric the drawing of the glasses feels in charcoal. Yeah, probably could have made the background a little bit lighter, but that's okay. Well, uh, it just helps the highlights to stand out a little bit more on the lower parts of the rims. That is true. A little dark, a little extra darkness in the background. You know, uh, if you're going to err too light or too dark, it's 90% of the time it's better to err on the dark side. That was supposed to be Darth Vader on the dark side. Mm. All right, so I got that off. No tearing of the paper. That is not tearing of the paper down there. That's well, just Deborah a little says, bit of, awesome job. A little bit of stray charcoal. Patricia okay, says, thank you. Or Patricia says, awesome job. And Deborah says, love the result. Sweet. Charles says, wow, just wow. All right. And Lisa says, nice, Matt. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate all your comments. And I hope you enjoyed uh, tonight's. Getting sketchy episode next week. Ashley will be doing the, the drawing. That's and right. My let's switch fifth, out over here and drawing for the season coming up. Yeah, let's switch out and talk a little bit more, and we'll wrap things up. Well, there you have it. A pair of glasses. Right, a pair That's of right. glasses. A pair of glasses. Yeah, I think we can say that. So Ashley's going to be doing the drawing next week. You have any uh, thoughts? Um, I've been thinking about what I'm going to draw, and I actually think I've come up with an idea for the next live lesson. 
Um, but not yet for it's getting sketchy. So um, <laughs> well, we got one of them I'll down there. Heart before my horse a little bit because it's getting sketchy is coming a lot sooner. So yeah, I'll be thinking about that and uh, making a determination over the next couple of days. I believe okay. I've drawn in color once and in black and white three times, but I'll have to double check that. If that's the case, I'll use some sort of color medium. I but, can't remember. But remember, there's no rules. There's no rule. so I can do whatever I want. Choose whatever you want. Right. As Last long week as it's, I drew a hand. Yeah, as long week, as it's appropriate. We're going to draw a hand again. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. Uh, but I could. I could do whatever I want this season. And uh, and that's nice. But um, not, not the hand. Um, yeah. But I'll think about it over the next couple of days. And, uh, and then you can check back and uh, get your materials ready so that you can follow along if you like doing that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I will have that. Stella says no spotters. You got, you got it, Stella. No well, I still have one more drawing. That's right. I might make it a spider, it Stella. A spider. Right. Big old hairy tarantula. <laughs> Facing right at us, right at the camera. Yeah, I've, I've drawn with charcoal or twice. crawling over someone's <laughs> face. That well, be... see what's Ugh. in the course. I have spiders. I had fun making the course. I, I have spiders crawling over the surface of the paper and you know scary spider music playing mm -hmm. that's know. right I'm, yeah so it's it's fun yeah. uh and they're not real spiders anyway yeah. um i've got one more drawing this season and it probably won't be a spider uh it won't be in charcoal again which i'm kind of sad about because i've enjoyed doing the two charcoal drawings mm -hmm. that i did uh this season but uh ashley will be up next and uh Right now, we don't know what it's going to be. Right? No, so, no. Um, that be a surprise. Choose like a metallic, colorful insect, and I actually did one of those mm. about three or four seasons or years ago, mm -hmm. probably seasons ago. So check that one out. It was on black paper. I think mm -hmm. I used That's right. I a think beetle. I used colored pencil and maybe some paint, maybe yep. some gouache. So that was a lot of fun. Um, Matt, both Matt and I do like to draw bugs, spiders or other bugs. So <laughs> could, that could always always be. Always be. I like to draw beetles, actually. You know, Is that right, Mike? Yeah, I know. I know. They're super shiny. The beetles you know, get that great, that great shiny surface. And I did a, I did a surreal painting with a beetle crawling up a set of stairs made of playing cards. And I was just looking at that this weekend mm. or this past weekend. I wasn't liking it. So maybe a beetle. That might be fun. All right. He's actually gonna do a beetle. Yeah. Or we could talk that way the whole time. Right. <laughs> I, mine will quickly turn into like a Middle Eastern accent. Every accent I try to do quickly turns into a Middle Eastern <laughs> that's, accent. That's funny. That's your default accent. I, it must be. <laughs> um, you can change the chat bots to laugh like they're British. I don't know how that's different. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it's different. I don't know. It's not different. Um, <laughs> um, what was I going to uh, say? Oh, you made me lose my train of oh, thought. No. Oh, the beetle. I, I have a uh, lesson on drawing a one of those shiny metallic beetles. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of the older ones, but it's using markers and colored pencils. Okay. Uh, and it's out there on so YouTube, it's so it's a free lesson. Shiny, shiny bugs out there already. Yeah, shiny bugs. Love the shiny bugs. I love all insects and, and all animals. You can find some beauty in them, except for maybe bats. Uh, you're crazy. Really seeing it. You, you like bats? The, the chat was talking about bats earlier, and they're talking. So, um, so I was outside a few about a month ago or so. I noticed my cat was looking up into the sky. The last time you were outside was a month ago. No, no, no. I was out, but a couple of months ago I was outside okay. with my cat, and uh, not the last time I was outside. And the cat was just looking up in the sky. I noticed from indoors, so I went outside to see what he was looking at, and it was yeah. a bat uh -huh. flying just just flying in a circle around over his head. You know, yeah, about getting ready to eat ground. him. So I stood there with the cat. And another bat joined in, mm -hmm. and they both just did circles around us for like ten minutes. Yeah, they were they were trying I to could eat have reached you. Reached out and grabbed one. Uh, they were that close. So yeah, I guess they were just giving us the old sonar once over, making sure we're not edible. Yeah, they they were totally vampires. Yeah, um, and they were they were just uh, you know just thinking sizing about you up. You're right, right. They You're like. Apparently, we don't measure up. Should these people be vampires? Right. We did not pass the the test. They didn't want to bring you into their club. So they're they're cool animals. Cool animals. All right, guys. We're going to wrap this up for real now. Um, I feel like we finished earlier because... It's daylight savings time. Yeah. You just think it's early. <laughs> it's messed us all up. <laughs> uh, Time-wise, it doesn't look like we finished earlier. But anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and sign out. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who are going to join us for the live lesson, we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. And uh, we'll see the rest of you next week.
Same bat, Tom. Same bat channel. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody.